These are five major pre-med red flags for those applying to medical school. I'm Mike, graduated from UCLA Medical School, now an anesthesiology resident in New York City. And I've helped thousands of pre-meds just like you get into their dream medical schools. And I've also seen thousands of pre-meds get rejected everywhere. Reason number one is non-impactful extracurriculars. I myself did 343 hours of hospital volunteering and it did nothing for my application. In fact, at my multiple interviews, it never came up a single time. And it makes sense because I did nothing impactful. I wiped down keyboards. I walked down to the basement to get some toothpaste because the unit had run out. And I kid you not, I spent the first 50 hours at the front door just saying hi and greeting people who walked into the hospital. Hospital volunteering made me look like every other pre-med. I was an interchangeable cog in the machine. And now if your entire application is filled with non-meaningful extracurriculars like hospital volunteering, then you're in this tricky position where medical schools don't have a compelling reason as to why they should accept specifically you. And so you are one of many tens of thousands of carbon copy, generic, mediocre, average pre-meds. And how do you become the best carbon copy pre-med? Often what that looks like is the generic pre-med who has a 528 MCAT and a 4.0 GPA, that person just gets the seat. I personally cannot compete with those stats and many thousands of pre-meds that I also know will not win at that game. So you must have something impactful in your extracurriculars that allows you to get out of that generic carbon copy pre-med audience. You want to exist in your own box, in your own lane, so that admissions committees can't pit you against a bunch of other pre-meds who probably have sky high stats and some ridiculous accomplishment in research that I will never get to. Reason number two is not having clinical experiences. This kills even the best applications and for good reason. If you don't have clinical experience, you've completely missed the entire point of applying to medical school. The point of medical school is to become and train as a doctor. Doctors work in clinical settings, and if you have no clinical experiences, the math just doesn't add up. You must understand the patient-physician experience, and you need proof that this is actually what you want to do for a career. There are many things that aren't perfect about medicine. Sick patients that you really liked will pass away. The red tape and hospital bureaucracy will prevent a lot of physicians from exercising their own agency. The workload can often be insane, and it'll be 15 years of delayed gratification before you can exit that student survival mindset you've been in for so long. But again, you won't really intimately understand these until you work with real doctors and speak with real patients. Reason number three, anticipated hours. This has become far too common in my opinion. Too many pre-meds apply with 2000 anticipated hours. They're writing about the excellent clinical research position that they will be doing in the coming year. And to me, it looks like you're applying before you're even ready. Especially if outside of those application hours, your overall application is weak. Said otherwise, if you need to rely on anticipated hours, your application alone cannot stand on its own two feet. That is a really tenuous position to be in as a pre-med applicant. And remember, when you apply isn't a surprise, and I believe you can have the foresight to know whether or not you will be competitive by the time you submit your application. If you have a proactive, intentional four-year plan and check in quarterly, it should not be a surprise that when you apply, you are competitive, or when you apply, you are not competitive. Now, if you want to make sure and guarantee that you're not in this situation when it is time you apply, I've linked a four-year plan template that is completely free, plug and play, that you can fill out today to ensure that you have a crystal clear roadmap on what you need to do, when you need to do it by, and how you are going to build a competitive application. The problem with anticipated hours is just that they're worth less. And so when you write about it in your personal statement or your working activities, you are just assuming. And what that ultimately looks like is generic general platitudes with no specific data, no specific patient stories, nothing really tangible for the reader to hold on to. When all you can say is this is what I will do instead of this is what I have done. You speak from a position of weakness. And now you have to follow up with them later in the cycle. And there's certainly no promises that there will be a seat available for you at that time. It's like the person who says that they will lose 30 pounds this summer. How much do you believe them 
at the beginning of the summer when they haven't done a single workout and they haven't stood on a scale one time. You want to believe them, but it is hard to until the actual results come in. Reason number four, no longitudinal experiences. Great things take time to build. Of course, there are extracurriculars like my hospital volunteering gig that took 343 hours where 343,000 hours would not have made a difference. How you invest your time matters, but there is a floor of minimum hours to make some substantial impact. Those are the hours that are required to build the skills that will help you make the impact that stands out. Longitudinal experiences show commitment to projects, teams, and missions. Your summer mission trip for four days in Vietnam or your three-week research internship at a different institution is far weaker than you think. And if you're struggling to figure these things out, I did too. The Pre-Med Catalyst Mentorship Program was designed specifically for pre-meds just like you, who want to make the right decision at every step of their journey. If that sounds helpful, there is a link in the description box below. And finally, reason five is not understanding your own strengths and not intimately knowing what your weaknesses are. If you apply with glaring red flags in your application, I promise you admissions committees will notice. Remember, there is a cost to applying to medical schools and far too many pre-meds every single year apply just to see what happens, only to now be down thousands of dollars of application fees a whole year of their life and paradoxically have lowered their chances for the next application cycle. Those are the five red flags that will keep you out of medical school. Hopefully that helped. Have a good day.